Hey, my name is Armin Barami. I'm 28 years old. I live in Norway. I've been living here since I was three years. I didn't go to school after I was 16. I started studying on my own because sometimes you feel that everybody out there is going the wrong way. So you can't be a dead fish following the stream. So I came back to school actually when I was 23. I went to a lot of different works and I studied uh, on the internet. Just got some books, thinking on my own, just walking, thinking, being with friends, talking, discussing, philosophizing, talking about different things. Did you know? Did you know this? Did you know that? Did you know? So we all got a lot of information. We're living in, in the age of information. We all got a big, giant hard disk that no technology out there can compare with because not only do we record stuff, but we can also create out of nothingness. We are infinite. Unlike robots who can only utter what you put in. You and me, we are endless, we are infinite, inexhaustible. And uh, that's because God gave us free will so we can be his co-partners and we can bring him more knowledge and we can always help God to become greater, to always propose and go forward and become more advanced. And the reason for this is because we want perfection, we want the best state of art. And uh, most people think that God is super intelligent, of course he is right now, if you, if you know how old this, this universe is. But in the beginning God wasn't this old, so God gave us free will, so he can have many more like himself. Uh, thinking, uh, con uh, contemplating, wondering, some went too far, some became his adversary. and. Uh, Half of creation as we know it right now is beasts, reptilians, sharks, crocodiles, lions. These are not God's creation because God is good. And uh, these beasts won't hesitate to kill you. So you should kill them before they kill you. Uh, so you can love what you love. Life. I don't want to take life. I want to give life. I have the power of creation. I'm a co-god. I'm a co-creator. And uh, co-creators don't kill. We give life. That's what life is all about. More life. You want to live. Because if you do unto others, this is a cosmic law. Others will do unto you. So if you want others to be good to you, you have to be good to them. If you come to our place and you start killing, you are actually killing yourself. What goes around comes around. I came to study that... Um, my God wants me to know that this world is made of endless possibilities. It's a place where you can create. You can always have someone else you can go to and you can sit with him and you can like, wow, I got this. Look what I came across or look what I just created. We just created and he tells you something else and we all share and we all enjoy our different creations. But the problem with the world right now is that some of us, they don't want more creation. They want to stop creation. They just want Jesus, Moses, and Muhammad. This is, this is it. They don't want more than that. No more. Don't say anything more. Just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. Because some people in that system who created it are satisfied living like that. God is not. God is not satisfied with that. Or else I wouldn't be standing here speaking these words. Because God would have taken my life. Because God is everyone and everything. Always recording my thoughts. My private conversations too. I'm not alone for a second. And God wants us to help him help you. Help himself. Help everything. You know, he's not, he's not one of those who... Who wants everything for himself? He's not a jealous God. He won't. He don't want everybody to walk in line and constantly worship him, beg and beg and beg. Please, 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 help us, God. Because we, we, if, if we all do that, who's going to bring the food on our table? Who's going to build a roof over your head? Who's going to build uh, your clothes? Who's going to help you uh, uh, bring the waters from the rivers? Who's going to help you keep you warm? You know, all these different things, that constant worship and prayer, they think like diseases and everything is 
you 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 haven't been good with God and you have sinned you are being punished for your karmic karmic balance is off balance and now you have to you have to check in with the bank of karma and yeah that's why you're sick go pray go pray and pray and pray and pray and dude went praying for 10 years and nothing happened while some other guy named Zarathustra went out there with plants he had a 10,000 registered different medical plants in his book he knew what plants was for what healing the purposes he could actually make the blind see Jesus didn't do that with boogie boogie hoogie he, he, you can't because you're actually in a world made of laws woven together in a materialistic shape because you are spiritual of course you are some of us have just came to this place for the first time some of us have been in these different vessels being different animals plants and minerals and all these different life forms on earth through many million times some of us are familiar with this place some others are lost it seems like most of us old schools have left we just abandon it because it seems like it's going to not going to change uh, but some of us are still here many are still here fighting and uh, and uh, I'm not going to give up basically 16 cargo ships are polluting more than all the cars in the world and all that pollution is being spewed into the ocean sinking down making the oceans acidic toxic non-living environment you make home garbage place so you have to expand your local productivity and stop shipping everything around you are producing something in Italy apples for, for instance and you ship them to another country far away to wash those apples and then you send them with ships again to the other side of the world as far as possible you can because then you make more money on transportation he packages those apples and then you send those apples with those packages to another country again as far as possible you can so you can say oh, more time time is money money is time to write on the packages and then you send those apples with those packages, with those plastic around it to all the different countries in the world it has to stop because the fish my friend, the fish is far more important than just being on your dinner plate because we all read the Bible we all been misled we all been taught wrong by the Torah and the Quran that you should, the God has given you everything for you to rule over and enjoy uh, no, just drop it, forget it, forget it, the sooner the better, just forget it, okay? Because the fish has an important role in the ecosystem. When you spew out, oh, you spew out, you see these boats, there's dark clouds are hovering for a while before they drop down into the ocean. And they sink because it's heavy, carbon is heavier, and it makes the oceans acidic. Fish dies. And when the fish die, the, the poop of the fish or, or the carbon itself is sufficient enough to make the environment unbreathable. You cannot have more fish in there. And when the, when the fish is gone, uh, what I'm trying to tell you is if the fish is gone, you won't have allergies either you won't have no life in there and uh, when that happens uh, the earth soil where we live above water becomes very very indigestible you can't breathe up here because you need the fish and to have the allergies and you need the allergies to have the fish and the different shrimps and the different aquatic life that make seaweed and sea trees you also have giant trees on, on the, under the oceans that creates oxygen 20 30 percent of the worldwide oxygen supply comes from the oceans 
That's a lot. 70% of this earth is covered with water. 30% of the oxygen comes from the algae and the, the sea life. The rest of the oxygen we use comes from the trees. You see I'm trying to use a little oxygen right now. I don't want to use too much oxygen, so I'm just kind of trying to keep my voice cool and calm. Amazon rainforest creates rain and oxygen, right? And what I was trying to tell you about the source and the resource is that the source we are using for different purposes is constantly being refilled by the source, the sun. And for that to happen, the sun particles need to land on leaves. Nobody knows where rain comes from. They do, a lot of them, but they don't tell you. They want you to, to know that the reason for drought and climate change is because we use too many cars and we're not paying enough tax to cut back on the, the coal and we should start stop using oil and... You can, you can still use oil. Oil is never going to be out of uh, stock because it's constantly being created under heavy pressure under the soil and it's coming up. Uh, but uh, nobody knows where the rain falls from. They all just think it falls from the sky. Hello. Pretty obvious that it falls from the sky. But where does it come from? Whatever goes up, comes down. So when we have enough trees, we always have more resources and we always have more material from the sun being harvested and being transported and navigated to different working stations like trees and like uh, even rocks and so this planet can grow bigger so we will have more inhabitants. Um, the rainforest is very important, but we, we we also need to have more local food varieties. Because when we all eat uh, low crops, like potatoes, chips, and especially meat, meat is the worst thing. Meat makes you really fucked up. Meat is really bad. Really, really bad. Because it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of land. It takes a lot of food to produce one burger. It takes like four or five years to raise up a cow. It takes only five days to raise up a mushroom. Or t t two weeks to raise up herbs. Or uh, three weeks to raise up some vegetables. Not five years like it takes for a cow to be fat. You put in a lot of food, you get a little back. So what happens is that we're cutting a lot of trees and we're not creating more oxygen. Eventually, uh, the oceans will evaporate because you have less clouds and then you'll have more evaporation from the ocean. The, the evaporation process has already been started. A lot of lakes and a lot of uh, rivers are drawn dry because there's too little clouds. So uh, we're running on backup system. We're running on reserves. We're not creating anymore. We're just exploiting everything for the purpose of capitalism ecosystem is not compatible with capitalism these two are adversaries and you cannot have both of them you always have to know that you cannot just come to America like they did when the Indians said to them do not hunt the buffaloes all of them take little leave behind something they, they came and they took everything, you know, they just killed everything and sold it right away. Even the beavers in the rivers, they became all these hats. They're all gone, so they couldn't reproduce, resource. 
that's what capitalism is all about you all, you you have so many products not being used you know they're just being thrown out they just hope that they're gonna they're gonna you know sell it they all end up in the trash can anyway or just being in some warehouse never being used uh, because you, you you don't have a constant ebb and flow of supply and demand you don't have administration a worldwide global administration if I was uh, on the bottom of the pyramid, if you flip it, I would always know with the different communication tools how much uh, needs are being uh, called in. So we would always send and ship to the places where the need, needy ones are. Instead of, uh, you know, we would also have a lot of problems with how much each person can, can consume. So there's going to be some kind of uh, control if we eat meat <laughs> and if you you know like we all want new clothes every day 15 or 10 new uh, I want three new jackets today I want two new because everything is free we all go to work a little bit and we don't need the money in the system anymore we just have people working on different production lines and we cut all these different middle men between the middle men between middle all these chains unnecessary chains between what is being produced and what is being consumed when we cut all these different things we will have more uh, land for instance because uh, you will take away marketing marketing is uh, so bad for the environment you use so much paint you, you cut down so much trees so you can put up billboards, you can put flyers in the mailboxes, advertisement uh, on plastic bags, on everywhere you go, and it's not even good for your brain too because you have so much bombardment. You just being, you being, yeah. Look at me. I'm not feeling right because I can't escape. I have to walk looking down you know there's too much commercial I don't want to have all these things in my head and all those uh, companies that are delivering the same product one product has like 15 different companies fighting for it with different names and different brands but basically it's the same product uh, these companies they also need a lot of space and they need a lot of uh, competition, always competing and always losing. Some are coming home losing their jobs because they they didn't compete. The other one are too efficiently on the price. He knocked us out of business. Uh, basically, in the end, there will always be one company. The man with the most money will eventually win if, if this system is working as it is and if it's allowed to continue. Uh, a lot of people will will have less jobs and the one with the most money he will then decide according to him but not to us we can always rebel we can always say no go to hell uh, because it's not good for the environment that we just close our eyes and tear down everything because we always live for the 50 years we always live for now it's like I'm here I want most for myself. I don't care for the next generations. All I think about is I have little time because they taught you a big giant conspiracy theory that you have to die. I have to die. I only have 50, 60, 70 years. Fuck everybody else. I'm gonna do what's good for me and my family. I'm gonna do whatever it takes. I'm gonna steal, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna push some people off the cliff. I'm gonna manipulate. I'm gonna make them look bad so I can get their job and I can get the most salary. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, maybe I'm even gonna poison my colleagues so I can get that job I want. You know these things because you've been telling people that they have to die. You have to die. Everything dies, dies, dies. When you constantly think about it, you become stressed. But if you tell the people the real truth, Fereidun, Hammurabi, uh, before the Jews started killing animals, which was forbidden, uh, they were disturbing the peace and order in Egypt. 
That's why Moses was kicked out, and then he came back again, and uh, uh, because they killed a lot of animals. And if you read Ma'at, 42 principles, it's clearly illegal. It was clearly illegal because there is a bond between all humans and animals. We all working together, uh, fertilizing. The birds are fertilizing. The bees are pollinizing. The fish is uh, pooping alkaline poop that stabilizes the acidic levels. So you always have more algae producing more oxygen, more aquatic life, more air for us to breathe. More animals can come and more humans can come. More rain. Rain is good because with, with more rain you can make more clothes. Because a lot of these clothes are actually 